Rob with SafeNet AT, and today we're doing an integration of Microsoft IIS with the SafeNet AT Luna SA HSM for Government. The prerequisite for this integration is to have the Luna client installed and configured properly. We have other guides and videos that can walk you through that. So when preparing for this integration, it's a good idea to run VTL Verify. We'll CD into Program Files, SafeNet, Luna Client, and run the command VTL Verify. This shows that we do have the client configured correctly, and the partition is showing as assigned to the client. Once we know we have the client configured correctly, we need to run the KSP config utility. By default, this would be in Program Files, SafeNet, Luna Client, in the KSP directory. Double click on ksp-config.exe, and that launches the KSP config wizard. The first thing is to double click on register or view security library, and then click the browse button. We'll want to browse to the Luna client directory and select cryptokey.dll. Click open and then click on register. Now we double click on register HSM slots. And we'll need to do this for two different users. By default, it should be populated with the administrator user in the current domain. We'll select the slot that we have assigned to this client, enter the password, and click on register slot. Now we need to select the system user with the domain NT authority and also click register slot. If you want to verify these, you can click on View Registered Slots for any user and domain, and it will show the slots that are assigned for that user. Now that we have the KSP configured correctly, we can install the IIS role. This is from Server Manager. We click on Manage, Add Roles. And select Web Server IIS. For this video, I'll be accepting the defaults. This does take a few minutes to install, so I will fast forward. Once installation is complete, we see the notification that installation succeeded. We can close this window now. Now to prepare for this integration, we do need to set up a request.inf file. I have one here. The contents of this file are in the guide. So take a look at the guide and copy and paste. You'll want to make sure, if you do copy and paste, that you correct all the line breaks, make sure that each entry is on its own line, and that there are no special characters. For instance, sometimes copying text from a PDF file into Notepad can replace quotes with smart quotes. So make sure that all the quotes are standard, normal quotes, and all the line breaks are correct. You'll want to make sure that the common name in the subject field matches the URL the customers will enter when they access the website, as well as also putting that in the subject alternate name field shown here. Also, for this to work correctly, you'll need to make sure that the web server's URL and IP address are configured in your DNS server. As you can see here, if I ping iistest.insat.com, it does return the correct IP address of this server. The request.inf file needs to be saved as a file type .inf. By default, Notepad will try to create text files, so make sure to select All Files and then enter the full name with extension request.inf. Now to create the certificate request, we'll have to use a command line tool. So we'll need to change into the directory where the request.inf file is. The command is certrec.exe-new request.inf and then the file name of the request. I'll be using request.req. This creates a private key on the HSM and creates the certificate request file named request.req. If we take a look at the request file, we see the contents here. For this video, we'll be using Microsoft Certificate Authority. So we will copy this file and then paste it onto our Certificate Authority server. 
For this video, for Microsoft Certificate Services, we have it configured as an Enterprise CA, which uses templates. Here we'll create a duplicate of the base web server template, and we'll name it Web Server 2. I'm keeping all of the defaults for this template. You do want to double check the subject name tab. Click on that and verify that it does show that the name will be supplied in the request. Now that we have a new template created, we do need to right click on certificate templates and select new template to issue. And our new template is now listed in our list of certificate templates. Now we stop and restart the service for the new templates to take effect. Here I'm copying the certificate request from the web server to the certificate authority server. Next, we open a command prompt and change into that directory. And to accept the certificate request, we'll use certrec.exe dash attrib for the attribute. Here we'll specify the certificate template to be the web server 2 template that we created. Dash submit request.req. This will prompt us to select which certificate authority. Here we only have one. And here we'll need to specify a path and name for the certificate. Here I'm using signed.crt. While we're on the certificate authority server, we also need to retrieve the root CA certificate. This needs to be trusted on the web server in order to accept the certificate that's signed by the certificate authority. We can retrieve the root CA certificate using the command certutil dash ca dot cert, and then give it a name. Here I'm using ca root dot cer. Now we'll copy the signed certificate as well as the root certificate. And we'll paste those back on the IIS web server. Now to install the root certificate, right click on the ca root .cer file and select install certificate. We'll install this into the local machine and select the trusted root certification authorities store. Now that we have the root certificate for the CA installed on the machine, we can accept the certificate that was signed by that CA. We use the command certrec.exe dash accept and the name of the certificate, signed.crt. We now have a certificate created with a private key on the HSM, and that certificate will be available for us to use in IIS. Now in order to configure IIS to use this certificate, we'll go back to Server Manager and select Tools, Internet Information Services Manager. We'll expand the local server, expand sites, and click on Default Website. Now we'll click on Bindings, and we see by default there's a single entry for HTTP port 80. Then click the Add button, select HTTPS, and select the certificate that we created. We can now delete the port 80 binding in order to assure that the only server running is the HTTPS SSL protected server. Now under Website, click Restart to restart the site. And then we can open a browser and enter HTTPS and our URL, in this case, iistest.inset.com. Here we see we've connected to the server using SSL, and the certificate is valid.
And this completes the integration of IIS with our Luna SA HSM for Government.